Hi, welcome to today's quick topic video on latitude and longitude entries. In this video, we'll review latitude and longitude entry formats in the FMS in both standard entries as well as airing shorthand. Latitude and longitude have been the cornerstone of navigation for hundreds of years. Even with incredible leaps in technology, from triple installation hybrid IRS to satellite-based navigation with augmented position inputs, an entry of latitude and longitude in the flight management system can still be a necessary part of a flight plan. Further complicating the issue, shorthand inputs and abbreviations have emerged to simplify entry formats, but we'll look at how they may actually add to confusion. Combined with the overall infrequency of latitude and longitude inputs, it can be difficult to remember how to enter them correctly using degrees and minutes. It's worth pointing out that the FMS does not recognize seconds in the entry format, but minutes can be entered in tenths or hundredths by inserting them after a decimal. For example, north 32 degrees 20 minutes 30 seconds would be entered as N3220.5. To begin, picture the Earth divided into quadrants. The Earth is divided based on the equator and the prime meridian. Any point north of the equator can be referenced as north latitude and south of the equator as south latitude. The prime meridian works the same way, only in the vertical axis. West of the prime meridian becomes west longitude and east becomes east longitude. Notice that latitude uses two digits ranging from 0 to 90, whereas longitude uses three digits from 0 to 180. Here's where it can get confusing. Let's take a look at a whole degree lat long of 50 degrees north latitude and 30 degrees west longitude. This would usually be written like you see here. However, a complete entry in the flight management system would entail 13 characters in the scratch pad, 6 for latitude and 7 for longitude. The same coordinates when communicated over radio would be 50 north, 30 west. An airing shorthand entry would be 5030N. And finally, a track message would display 50 slash 30, five different ways of describing the exact same point. Let's use our previous example and make sure everyone understands the input format for the FMS. There are no spaces when entering a full lat long. Notice we start with north or south latitude, followed by two digits that represent degrees. The next two are minutes. Technically, that's all we need to enter for a whole degree entry. Let's say you're flying into a private airstrip and wanted to enter seconds. Remember, seconds must be entered in tenths or hundredths of a minute after a decimal point. For example, 30 seconds would be entered as 0.5. After latitude, we start with east or west longitude. The next difference is because longitude ranges from 0 to 180 degrees, we use three digits when entering them, followed by two digits for minutes and a decimal point for tenths if required. Here's an example using an FMZ, but keep in mind the format will be the same for any platform. Once placed in the flight plan using a line select key, the MCDU will display the lat long as a temporary waypoint using the format LL01, where LL means it's a lat long and 01 means it's the first temporary waypoint in the flight plan. Additional entries will be sequentially numbered. Lat longs will appear with the same format on the MFD. It can be tempting to abbreviate the lat long entry, but doing so can have significant consequences. Let's look at an example. The crew wanted to enter 21 degrees north 2.6 minutes and west 86 degrees 52 minutes, a location that was around Cancun, Mexico. They entered north 212.6 and west 86.52. The FMS interpreted the leading zero as what was abbreviated and created the latitude at 2 degrees 12 minutes. That put their destination about 2,000 miles away, somewhere over the Central Pacific. It's easy to see how a gross navigational error could occur this way. For this reason, Honeywell always recommends entering the full 13-character lat-long coordinates unless using an erring shorthand waypoint that we'll look at next. Let's take a look at Air Inc. Shorthand. Air Inc. 424 Shorthand is an additional way of simplifying lat longs. Its primary purpose is to name the commonly used waypoints for oceanic crossings to reduce the risk of gross navigational errors due to an incorrect input. As you see here, 
waypoints are created by combining the latitude and longitude and inserting the cardinal heading depending on its position around the globe. They're coded in the navigation database just like a conventional waypoint and are retrieved when the pilot enters the appropriate name. A couple points worth mentioning. The FMS is not converting the shorthand to a lat long, it's just a defined waypoint like any other that would normally be entered in the flight plan. Also, to save space, not all oceanic waypoints are in the navigation database, so if the FMS doesn't recognize the shorthand entry, the crew will have to enter it manually like we described earlier. One final piece of information to complete our topic. In 2015, half-degree grid waypoints were implemented in the North Atlantic to increase efficiency in the core tracks and reduce spacing. These are discussed in detail in the ICAO NatOps Bulletin, but for the purpose of our discussion, it's important to be aware of the existence of half-degree coded waypoints on charts and in the NAV database. The basic difference is the cardinal headings north and west are removed from the shorthand and the letter H precedes the abbreviated lat long like you see here. For example, north 53 degrees 30 minutes and west 40 degrees would be coded as a half degree waypoint with the label H 5340. In summary, remember that latitude and longitude entries can be entered either by using the full 13 character lat long or by using the airing shorthand for oceanic waypoints that are in the navigation database. If seconds are required, convert them to tenths and add them after a decimal point. When entering a lat long, be sure to cross-check carefully against the master document. For more information or specific questions, please email fts at honeywell.com. Thanks for watching.